I'm not gonna lie, I really so hope this video doesn't get blocked. welcome to the teeny tiny shoebox apartment inside the arcade. There are lots of others in the building just like this. Yo, imagine- So mine is about 250 square feet. 250 square feet? Did you live it in a box? Yo, nah. There's a walkway right in front of the facade because this used to be a shop front. And so people had to access all of the shops in the building. While malls across the U.S. are this facing store closures and empty parking lots, some are finding a new life from an unlikely source. Amazon here, here warehouses? Arcade Mall in Providence, Rhode Island, Ice the rinks? oldest indoor shopping mall in the country. The arcade had long oh, wow. been a center point in Providence's bustling downtown. Wait, y'all called a, a mall the arcade? All like right. other malls, it fell on hard times and was completely vacant. But rather than letting this historic building fall into ruin, developers came in and decided to build 48 oh, micro- Oh, I mean, that fridge is kind of nice. So is the, well, I guess it makes sense because it's just built, huh? Off here on the second so it's floor gonna have, like, and a up lot here of on stuff. the third floor. While top tier malls continue to be Flat in high demand, cross. nearly 34 million square feet of US mall space is vacant and off the 34 market. 34 mil? Almost 70% of Americans live within an hour of a mall that has a high vacancy rate, low consumer traffic, or is abandoned altogether. That's a fact. At the same time, the country is facing a massive housing deficit of 4.5 million homes. There's a housing problem in a lot of markets across the US, right? This is an opportunity to, to find land and have a built-in customer base to get people into the mall. Monday through Friday, this is really busy down here. Um, it's definitely, Wait, you so know, there's less houses? people what? in the offices working, getting lunch or whatever, and my barber's downstairs. As of January 2022, at least 192 U.S. malls plan to add a housing component. The U.S. has oh, about shit. 1,100 regional and super regional malls. Now, see, that... <sighs> That right there is kind of skeptical, bro, because it's like, you know, in New York, you you live above like a, a deli or some shit like that. It's cool and all, but like, imagine it's like, damn, you're at a mall and you got work at night. So you have to sleep during, during the day. And while you're sleeping, all you hear is all of these niggas downstairs just making all this noise. It's like, I don't About know, man. 8.5% lower than 2015. So, can new but housing developments live, help revive the classic American mall? And what's it like to live inside one? CNBC went to Providence, Rhode Island to find out. I wouldn't do it personally. I don't know about y'all, but I wouldn't do that shit personally. This is interesting, though. Living in a mall. Amy Hinion has been living on the top floor of a three-story mall in Providence, Rhode Island for the past two and a half years. Two. What's it like to live at the mall? It's really great. It's cool to be part of such a historic building and knowing that every single one of these units used to be a shop of some kind. But living in a converted store. <laughs> imagine you go into a, you, imagine you went into, uh, you rented out an apartment that used to be like a, a front, for like uh, a cocaine business or some shit. That would be Does so crazy. Does present some challenges. Here is my very tiny kitchen. I was it about is to say, that shit very is... small, but it is workable. Oh my and... God, that fridge is not good. I need to know how much she pays a month for this. I'm, I'm sure we're going to get to it, but I need to know because like, bro, that's a tiny ass sink. There's no dishes fitting in there. Or if there are, it's not going to be a lot. Um... The dishwasher is, is skinny as hell, so it's not going to fit too much. The fridge, though. I'm worried about the The fridge is literally... Now, she can't be that tall, right? Let's, be, let, let's just call a spade a spade. She can't be that tall. And the fridge is, like, by her chest. That is a tiny-ass fridge, bro. And one of the interesting things about the... Unit now see this looks nice that's a nice kitchen even though it's kind of tiny this is a nice looking little thing i don't even think this is a kitchen. where's the, the building oven? is that because of code i just realized that do you, you have can't ovens? have any cooking devices with an open flame so none of There's the units no stove. have stoves or ranges wow do you so ever have any concerns about privacy not really. It's something you get used to living in the building, having people coming and going. Bro, Everybody I'm not paying anything over $500 a month for this. I'm not going to lie to you, bro. 
I am not paying anything over $500 a month where I don't even have a stove or a or a an oven to cook food, bro. I got to use a maybe an air fryer, maybe a, a microwave. I'm not paying more than $500 for a place that don't even have a stove, bro. That's nuts. Lines in their apartment that they can raise or lower as they like. Well, what about houses? Some of them don't come with fridges and stoves. That's different, bro. It's a house. That is a box she's living in. Those and she can't even buy a stove if she wanted to because they don't allow it. Challenges. Residents say having access to shops and restaurants makes living at the cost, arcade bro. a unique experience. This is so I get dumb. my hair cut in the salon downstairs and there's little lunch spots so you don't even have to leave the building. There's a bookstore downstairs and they'll do author talks in the private lounge area. Avoiding New England's oh, so sometimes is stormy weather open. is, of course, another perk. If it's like pouring rain outside or if it's snowy, you just really can't be bothered to go out in the weather, you can still go downstairs and take advantage of those amenities. Well, what about the niggas who work there? Don't they have to travel from wherever the fuck they're at in the snow just to be there for y'all? And it's not just long-term renters that are attracted to the mall. Scott Sheehan is a real estate investor and rents out his apartment on Airbnb. What Some the of these business owners that are down on the first floor, how important oh, is it to is them to apartment. kind of have a built-in customer base with these residents on the second and third floor? I know a lot of folks are very loyal to, you know, many of the bars, restaurants, clothing stores downstairs. So, you know, the, the business folks downstairs definitely are interested in maintaining that relationship with, with the residents. You definitely feel like you're part of the community more so than if you were just in a standard apartment building. This it has so been interesting uh, with people trying to unlock my door, thinking that this is an Airbnb apartment. So sometimes you have to deal with the public more than you would in a regular home. But yeah. for me, that's a small compromise. A new anchor store housing. When a mall dies, communities lose more than just a shopping destination. Malls All often serve as economic hubs, generating billions in tax revenue and creating thousands of jobs. In that 2020, too. U.S. malls and shopping centers contributed $400 billion in tax revenue. Holy shit. When malls shit. close, it triggers an economic domino effect. Local businesses suffer, jobs are lost, and vacant spaces become eyesores. To combat this, developers are transforming dead malls into mixed-use spaces, offices, medical facilities, and housing. Of these conversions, mm. nearly 54% are being used for residences and office space. Okay. Once upon a time, retailers like Macy's and JCPenney were the anchors of America's malls. But that's a fact, bro. Every <laughs> When I was growing up, JCPenney was on this side, Macy's was on this side, and now them short, them Department short, stores, stores are, are shrinking. Empty. Macy's plans to close 150 of its namesake stores by 2027. Oh! JC Penney, which has already closed hundreds of stores yeah. since declaring bankruptcy, is closing four more between this year and next, despite a billion dollar turnaround investment plan. No way! When you way. have dead retail space, it can be easier to clear that. Most of what a retail site is, is parking lot. So you don't have to demo much to demo a parking lot and the buildings themselves are generally easier to demo and then adapt into a retail space. Yeah, he's right. The arcade is a little bit different than some of the other mall-based residential projects out there. Most of them, like the one at Flatiron Crossing in Broomfield, Colorado, are adjacent to the mall and connected Whoa. by green spaces or walkways. This is nuts. This was a, a vacant parking lot, underutilized parking here at the mall, and we you know, decided to go to this, a mixed-use project here. All of the benefits that the shopping center itself bring to the equation, you have a highly amenitized residential project that's mm -hmm. much more desirable than something that might just be you know, in an isolated Live, location. Work, shop, Not only does it meet housing needs, but it also revitalizes the property by bringing like in a that? new customer base that can boost on-site restaurants, <laughs> gyms, walking like a fucking and cartoon character. All right. While housing in malls sounds promising, it's not without its challenges. Of course not. Zoning laws can be a major hurdle. Ooh, zoning. Malls are typically zoned for commercial or mixed use. <laughs> Shout out city not skylines. Not multifamily residential. Or city Developers skylines. often need approval from local jurisdictions to move forward. Like any other developer, you Sim know, city. are having to navigate things like interest rates, construction costs, the capital markets, and so on. 
Another obstacle is design. Most mm. malls have limited windows, which mm -hmm. are essential for residential spaces because they need natural light, making it difficult to convert certain parts of the mall. Kind of a fact. Usually, only the exterior-facing retail spaces are suitable for housing. Converting commercial office space into apartments is another trend, but it's often very expensive. A study found that in five U.S. metro areas hit hardest by remote work, the estimated office acquisition price would need to drop by 50% for the conversion to be financially feasible. Damn. Conversion project 50% is a lot. It's a really tricky because, you know, a lot depends upon existing conditions, which you might not always know about. But to give you a range, on a very low end, you'd be looking at maybe $200 a square foot to convert where on the upper end, you might be looking more at like $800 I mean, more that bathroom's convert, not bad, but it where... is fucking tiny, dog. Walk-in shower. I mean, that's the only thing they can do at that point, bro, is just walk-in shower because they can't put a bathtub in there. On the upper end, you might I be looking more at like $800 or more per square foot to convert. Despite those me, headwinds, have malls across shower. America just might have a second chance have a walk -in if they can truly and then like become a bathtub on the housing hubs I don't take of the baths. future. The mall is becoming cool again, like, I, I, and so being able to live by it, work by every it, other, play by it, go to restaurants or some by shit. it, we're definitely seeing it this as a trend. Some people <gasps> buy it, what? play by it, go to restaurants. Bro, the only place I've seen a Sarku was in Connecticut at the mall that I went to in Connecticut. That's nuts. Let's buy it. We're definitely seeing it, this as a trend. Some people are confused and they'll say, that place is so why good, would you want to live teriyaki in a chicken space with that's the rice small? And get extra teriyaki on but it. for me, it's about and I having a reasonable sushi. apartment oh. at a reasonable price Fire food. that will force me out into the community and interacting with the people outside. The point is not to stay in the 250 square foot studio. It's to interact with the downtown that you're living in. Mm, okay. Oh, that's it. Mm, I don't know. How do y'all feel about this, bro? Because honestly, I think it's kind of dope. But at the same time, I feel like it's just kind of a little weird. I don't know. Let me know how y'all feel, bro. Because I, I don't know, bro.